and we're live what's up everyone uh forgive the quality of my stream i'm working on it right my wi-fi is messing up especially it's right there it's messing up the stream quality but i'm doing my best so i thought in this stream i could talk a little bit about macros and what to do about it what to eat and but really how to rotate your food super super important what's up everyone what's up reese's i know i'm back again see because i already live streamed earlier today for an hour and a half on my keto course page what's up deborah so call me crazy but i'm like it's a beautiful sunny day and <clears throat> i don't like to stream late so if i try to do it tomorrow i won't be able to be able to and I will be uploading some preloaded videos soon. I just have to make them. Just get this up here righteously. All right. So, uh, complicated. <laughs> it's not complicated. It's so easy. It seems difficult, but it's really not. So let's go over the macros. Let's go over the rotation schedule. And then I'm going to bounce like a ball out of here. Okay. So, Number one, let's get our macros, macronutrients, which is your fats, your proteins, and your carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates would be from, coming from vegetables, clearly, or maybe some um, non-fructosey fruits like avocados. And uh, I, is there a constitution at the beginning of the month? Okay, we'll hit that in a minute. So uh, essentially what you want to do is first of all, get your macros, go to your cabinets. If you live, if you don't have a family who's eating carbs, stock the kitchen with either low carb, high fat. And Deborah's reminding you guys to like up the stream as people are coming in. Don't forget to like up the stream. So essentially what you want to do is get fatty meats. So the fatty meat cuts are you want fatty cuts, 15 to 20% coming from bison, beef, you could do ribeye, <clears throat> excuse me, ribeye, ground beef. Well, I shouldn't say fatty, uh, but that's ground beef with the bison and the beef. If you're going to do uh, cuts of, of steak, you want to do, if you can't afford ribeye, ribeye has a really nice marbled fatty red meat. And then you want to do things like lamb near the rib or the bone, like lamb chops. Uh, you want to do pork, belly, jowl. Uh, you want to do, let's see, your bacon must come from uncured and no sugar because most bacon has sugar, even though it says uncured on the package. So wrong, I know. Uh, you want to do things like, uh, if you have a histamine issue, you can do duck eggs, potentially. Uh, you can do things like chicken, eggs, but I prefer the yolk, and... So all comments I can't see right now, so just hold on a minute. Because I don't like to mute the comments. I just want you guys to be a little patient, and then I'll be on it. Uh, then uh, we've got uh, water. So you want water. Uh, people are asking, can I put stevia in water and lemon? And I don't really consider that water, to be honest. Just learn how to drink water, people. Also... Uh, you, you bleh, bleh. <laughs> so you've got your proteins and I'm trying to think if there's any other fatty meats oh chicken thighs drums legs uh, egg yolks lamb pork uh, bison beef those would be the main ones fish salmon sardines those would be the main ones now your fats can be, people are like, I can't do butter because I have a sensitivity to it. So they'll do beef tallow, rendered beef tallow or lard, which is coming from a pig. Uh, some people do um, bird fats, but I prefer pork, uh, pork, butter or lard as your animal fats. Now I don't, I do count monounsaturated fats like avocados 
and olives, but not a lot because those oils tend to oxidize easily, especially when you cook with them. And I no longer consider coconut oil or MCT oil a keto fat because the people I've been coaching are not adapting on those fats. Ketones are in the toilet. Once we switch them to animal fats, boop, and I mean like this go up the ketones. So those would be your macronutrients. Now, if you want a good source of micronutrients, eat some liver and eat some kidney and eat some heart and eat some tongue, especially the liver. If you want your vitamins and if you want your uh, uh, minerals, again, water is really, really important because if you gotta constantly drink lemon water, that might just wear the enamel off your teeth. Just saying. Okay. Now, I mean, it's great to squeeze lemon into water, but it does damage your enamel. So does apple cider vinegar. Now, apple, apple cider vinegar and lemon are high histamine foods. So for, we're going to go into the rotation schedule of these foods, the amounts, rotation, all of this. So if you're going to have, uh, you guys keep asking me questions off the subject. I didn't say no duck fat. I just said it's not the primary fat because the fatty acid profile coming from butter, ghee, lard, and tallow, the mono, saturate, and poly are more in the right fatty acid ratio balance than in duck fat, which tends to be more in poly. So we like cow, pig, and beef tallow. Yes, butter, ghee, if you can tolerate the butter or the ghee. Some people some people cannot tolerate it. Now there's no milk. Um, if you guys can tolerate, if you don't have it. So let's talk about the histamine camp. Uh, yes to duck fat and goose fat and chicken fat, yes. I have to be careful everything I say because you guys take me so literal. Now, uh, let's see here, um, spices. All of this now comes down to if you have autoimmunity, if you have leaky gut or histamine issues or candida. And I'm realizing, and most of you have one of those things or a gallbladder problem. So if you guys have a gallbladder problem, the gallbladder is designed to release bile salts, which are made in the liver, held in the gallbladder, released when you eat high fatty foods. So the body can take those salts, break down the fat, so it can get into the bloodstream and you make some ketones, right? You go and you're able to essentially utilize the fat for energy. So if you don't have a well-functioning gallbladder because you've developed sludge or stones or an infection, you're going to see your poop flowing with a lot of fat in it, which means you're not adapted. I don't even care if you're using a glucometer. You see your poo-poo float you in a poo poo mess okay you are not going to be adapted i also want a keto course so deborah is reminding she's my moderator she's reminding you guys to if you want to join my keto course which is 15 dollars a month because one of my clients signed up for a two thousand dollar keto course and got sick on it okay so this is 15 dollars a month that's nothing and you learn a lot on it so Deborah's reminding you guys to go to stephanieperson.com to sign up for that. If you don't know the spelling, she has written it in big, bold print. Now, with that said, because I'm trying to keep this stream short and um, yeah, keep the short stream going. So if you want to, uh, not if, if you are in the histamine territory, so histamine intolerance can, so this is like when you guys just react. You got seasonal allergies, you got, you know, nasal freaking sinus infections, nasal drip, you are bloated all the time, you've got broken blood vessels around your nose, you have a white tongue, an itchy bung, and itchy and itchy and around the nails, your nails are yellow, you've got plaque psoriasis, eczema, you've got dandruff. You might have a gut problem. In fact, if you've got shingles, 
and all this weirdness and acne. Something's going on right here, right there. Yep, right there. If you guys are constipated, if you have loose stool, if you have IBS, diverticulitis, you have ulcers, you have uh, Crohn's, then how to get rid of a white tongue. Okay, so I'll get to that. So if you have any of these things, okay, if you got like red spots and you've got the, um, dang, what's it called? Oh, I forgot the name of it right now. Uh, you know, the bumps on the back of the arm. If you've got rashes and red scalpy redness and you itchy women who've got vaginosis and uh, yeast infections and people who've got like loose stool or stinky stool. Uh, keto rash big time. So if you, if you got diff, would convunct and darn it, words are like out my mind. Convunct, convunct, Jungulitis, damn it, then the goopy stuff in the morning when you wake up. Oh, my brain just like where it's going, pure, pure. It's probably because I gotta go. So, with that uh, said, thank you, conjunctivitis. Hello, hello. All right, so if you have any type of infection, and I mean all over the place. You probably got a gut issue. Okay, you got some, you gassy? Okay. Uh, how old am I? Obviously, I have a Peter Pan problem because I'm 51 and a half. Okay, so <laughs> I'm 25. No, I'm 51 and in total denial. Don't get it twisted. So uh, with that said, Okay, so the, the people have just found me. I've been doing this for 11 years. I haven't like refed. I've had no alcohol, no caffeine, no nuts, no cheese, none of it, no sugar at all, no bread in 11 years. So I am the true hardcore keto person and I am doing it as the ultimate experiment. So when people say, how long have you done this? I can say strict for this long and this is what has happened to my bate. Hey, no, was I ever vegan? No. I had little girl friggin uh, sensibility when it came to thinking it was a nutrient deficient diet. No, never was vegan. Even when I was young, people would ask me to like, uh, uh, anyway, so let's get down to us. Uh, so we've gotten the vegetables. Now the vegetables are the scary, mm, speaking of veganism, that's the scary lane, right? Because I do consultations every day. I did one this morning and people have all those symptoms I just explained, right? Seasonal allergies, sneezing, colds and flus all the time, the white tongue, the itchy scalp, the plaque psoriasis, the, all the itises, like the itchiness, the, mm, mm, the bad breath, the, the, the So, uh, I'm like, okay, every consultation. And then when you go from the gut, it, it'll spread out and bleed to other problems. Brain fog with the candida, sugar cravings, crashing, hair falling out, low testosterone, men aromatizing, estrogen dominance, progesterone to the floor, uh, ringing in the ears, numbness in the fingertips, cold hands and feet, weight gain, and you can't lose weight. You can't. And to be honest, that shite starts here. And constipation, right? Because if your gut flora is in balance, it can actually seize, because you have a pipe from here to there. It goes all the way down, right? From nose to tail. And the, if, with, the, with, the bacterial imbalance, it can seize up peristalsis. So you can't poop things out. It's crazy. And then you're having all of this bacteria and pathogens that become reabsorbed back into the small intestine and into your bloodstream, including estrogen that just clogs up people's liver and gallbladder. And I see this every day. I do.
This is common. Okay, then when we get into the reproductive issues, I'm not even talking about energy yet. People have like, women are like, I've got night sweats. I have no period. My period's gone on for three weeks. I missed a period. I've got endometriosis. I've got polycystic ovarian syndrome. I've got fibroids. Oh, the, I've had my uterus removed. Like, it's scary. It's scary. I've already spoken about carnivore a million times. It's not a new subject. All right, somebody's like, I don't go carnivore. I'm like, I know. So with that said, you can't just go carnivore because it won't help people immensely if they don't do keto carnivore because people are having problems just doing a lot of ribeye. Okay? Okay. So um, the rotation. So because vegetables are an issue, then we've got the cruciferous, which is anything crunchy and mostly green. So we've got the... Brussels sprouts, we've got the cabbage, we've got the uh, broccoli and the asparagus, and we have, uh, they try and Deborah, um, it's easy to travel. I should do a travel stream since I travel so much, but haven't in a year. I've got to travel again. But uh, so you want to do more of a cruciferous vegetable. Now, non cruciferous vegetables, non very fibrous vegetables would be. Green beans, I didn't say peas, green beans or mushrooms if you don't have a very bad systemic candida infection. Uh, now, <clears throat> your fruits are, would be tomatoes and olives and avocado and coconut and those would, well, you know, anything with seeds it could be like squash and all of the zucchini, but we don't eat those on keto. Problem with the tomatoes is that a lot of you guys have nightshade problems. I'm, I'm telling you, this starts at the gut. Uh, problem with cucumber is that uh, actually you'd be surprised with the lack of fiber, how the amount of carbohydrates in a cucumber can spike your blood sugar. Then we've got, and it's also fruit and lectin and all this. And then we have, uh, let's see. So we have the cruciferous type. That's the main, those are your main vegetables. Now, before I used to promote like nine cups, not after carnivore, when I started learning more about the carnivore diet. Now, my videos done six months ago about carnivore. People keep landing on those videos. They're like, oh, this is how carnivore works. I'm like, update, look at the newer videos, people. And I keep all of the videos because some of the data, either I've gotten quasi wrong or I've updated or I've learned something completely new. No, fasting is just anorexia and we know that it is. You guys know that it is. Okay, it's just another excuse to diet. And now studies are coming in that people are starting to have all the autoimmune problems from fasting because they did. It's the same thing with doing the carnivore diet the wrong way. If you're eating a lot of ribeye and it's not quality meat, we're going to get your electrolytes from. People are having heart palpitations, women's thyroid, their hair, the this, the that. Like the, you become deficient. You really, really have to be careful that you're getting enough of your micronutrients to just go over to the organ meats. You get on a carnivore diet, but with high fat. So you can create ketones. But with that said, and I mean high fat. I mean adding fat because people are like, oh, look, there's a lot of fat on this ribeye. I'm like, that's not enough fat. Sorry, it's not. Not to be in ketosis or highly keto adapted. So, all right. So, um, so now we've got all the food. Now I want to talk about the rotation schedule to heal the gut. The reason why I want people to uh, rotate their foods on a ketogenic protocol is because a lot of you guys have histamine issues and gut issues. And if you're going to use ketogenesis or carnivore keto or keto carnivore to heal the gut lining, you have to rotate the foods. Because if you don't ro rotate the foods, those mono foods are going to build up. Like the body ha has an inflammatory response if it doesn't agree with a certain histamine, high histamine food, like an avocado. So you're like, oh, I'm having avocado a day. I'm just not having two avocados a day. Well, the body gets inflamed and it's inflamed and so that gut wall can't heal. So the gut wall remains open and that's what we don't want. We want to seal the gut wall in the small intestine by rotating the foods. That's why we rotate. 
So don't do keto and go, oh, I could just do the same foods every day. You know, and I'm like, don't do that. Don't eat a bunch of eggs. I do six eggs on keto. I'm like, that's a really great way to develop an egg allergy. Ask, ask Dave Ashbury, because I believe that's what happened to him. All right. So, yes, either you have to, this is what I suggest. Go carnivore for a week or 10 days. Cut out all vegetables for those who might think they have leaky gut or histamine intolerance. And then you're going to add each food back in for three days at a time. So you put in broccoli. Whoa, I got really gassy. Cut it out. I'm going to add in green beans. Oh, okay, I do well. Or cauliflower. I'm going to, I do well with cauliflower. You keep that in. And then you're going to add butter. Ooh, I don't feel like good when I eat butter. I get tired. I get itchy. I get mucusy. Cut it out. Add in lard. This is how you introduce and take out. Introduce. Now, if you have all the foods in, you have to rotate them. The fats, if you do really well with, let's say if you got really bad histamine intolerance and you only do well with tallow, then you're not going to rotate it because that's what you got for now. When that gut wall starts to heal, right, it starts to seal up, you can slowly add in like half a teaspoon of a certain type of fat or a certain type of salicylate that's in a spice that you or a nightshade or peppers. It's pretty crazy when you're born and you are not breastfed or you are a C-section baby. Every one of these people has some type of gut issue. And I mean, all of you. MCT oil is processed garbage. Don't believe the hype like public enemy saying back in the 90s. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm 51. Yes, 51. Okay, so with that said, you want to rotate your foods. Now, once you get into a real rotation schedule, we're not talking about carnivore and introducing your vegetation or your fruits, whatever. We're going to, uh, why? People love some Frankie. Yes, I've heard of Frank Tofano. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna say it like this very quickly. Frank, I think, is very, very good at reading, understanding, what, right? He's reading and understanding and deconstructing the nutrient deficiency, I mean deficient, the nutrient density in plants versus animal food. So I just, I got to give it up to some Frankie. He's doing very, very well on that. And he, he has done what a lot of professionals don't do. Like sometimes you just got to put one plus one together to create two, like just make it simple for people. But when it comes to the body itself, that takes time. You can read a book and you can read about thyroid, but until you actually work with people who've got thyroid issues and understand thyroid deficiencies, that is where I would be like, mm, he's he, he young, he young. He called me in his stream old. Frank Tavano called me old, <laughs> right? He called me old. Uh, but anyway, I think my underwear is showing. That is not good. Pants a little bit too big. You're 28. Okay. So yes, I, I really love what Frank has done with, yeah, with the, um, the breaking down the foods. So that's, that's really, really cool. But, uh, trying to help people with their health issues that takes time. Cause even in the beginning, when I started coaching people almost 10 years ago, I made a lot of mistakes. Cause I didn't know a lot then. And if you look at Steph's old videos and you look at Steph's videos now, you're going to see a big difference. And then with Frank, I think you'll see the, the same if he stays with us over time. Okay. Am I the Stephanie on the live stream? That's a real weird question. Cause I'm in a live stream. So, uh, how you rotate your foods and why you rotate your foods is to not have a histamine buildup that your body can't clear out. Right? A lot of you guys are not making enough diamine oxidase, which is an enzyme to help break down the histamine. So you have a histamine buildup and you can't, uh, you got to hold on, Michelle. I'm trying to explain this thing because people on the replay get really stressed when I don't finish this, the title of the video uh, discussing it. So with the uh, rotation schedule, it would be three to four days, take two meats, 
And if you're not doing carnivore, you would take two vegetables. In four days, you rotate to another two meats. So if you're doing like breakfast, you might have breakfast if you do three meals a day and I suggest three meals a day and actually fat bumping up in the in in uh, mid morning and afternoon fat loading for those trying to adapt unfortunately yes it is harder to uh, harder on your digestive tract to put in something in the mouth five times a day but it helps to make more ketones and balance your blood sugar and at the same time you've got to try to help seal up the gut lining a lot of you are nutrient deficient or you have gallbladder issues or you have leaky gut and you're putting in that fat and it's just coming out your bum. bum. I have new plans, new meal plans. I'm writing them now. I still have old ones. They're still amazing and the new ones will be even more amazing. So for people who are just like, I need a meal plan. I need something right now to know what to do on my site right now. There's nothing confusing. If you replay this video, there is nothing confusing about this live stream. Nothing. I'm saying to you guys, you have gut problems, right? If you are a C-section baby, or if you were not breastfed, you probably have a gut problem. If you've been taking antibiotics, you probably have a gut problem. If you've been drinking alcohol, you probably have a gut problem. Your stomach acids drop, bacteria becomes imbalanced, and you have a dysbiotic gut, which means a gut bacterial imbalance. When the bacterial imbalance is all messed up, you start to feel like crap because your immune system is here. It's mainly here, right? That's not confusing. You have to eat a high fat diet. I broke down very clearly your macronutrients, fat, protein, and carbohydrates, cruciferous vegetables, fatty meats, and fat. What is confusing? I haven't even talked about the amounts of food and you're, you're confused. So if you have a gut issue, you need to rotate the foods so the gut wall can heal. Now at the same time, you got to address if you have Giardia or any other type of parasite and Candida. Cause a lot of people try to go after the Candida and they haven't gone after the parasite. So they still have the Candida symptoms and there's all different kinds of Candida. So the Candida albicans is the one that appears all over the place. Here and here and here and there and there and there. That's the Candida albicans. They nasty. The white tongue and all this stuff. So um, those are your macros. Now I'm going to take the questions and bounce like a ball out. I don't re recommend vegetarianism because you all, we are already deficient. Like my client this morning, no, on my live stream, on my keto course page, because I do many consultations. So I did a mini consultation for those for $15 a month. You can do a consultation with me on Sundays. It's many though. And I was talking to her and she's like, I don't know why I've got hyper and hypo or not glycemic uh, thyroid symptoms. And I was like, okay, so your TSH was too high. The signal between the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis is like high TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and then it drops low T3. Symptoms, hair falling out, weight gain, blah, tired, blah. And I'm like, girlfriend, are you getting your micronutrients? She's like, yeah, I'm taking this medication and oh, I can't stand notifications on my phone when I'm talking. I'm getting this medication. I'm taking that supplement. I'm like, look, okay. So I've been talking a lot about the toxicity of vitamin D supplements and this woman on my Instagram. And I think I said this in another stream. She's like, Stephanie, I'm so glad you're saying this because my doctor told me to take vitamin D supplementation and I damaged my kidneys because she was taking the supplements for two years. So I've had other people take the supplements and still be deficient in vitamin D. It's just, they're just super toxic. All right, the supplements. So I told the client, the person on the course page, are you taking like krill oil, fish oil? Are you getting food time vitamin D? Are you taking, I've been nagging her to eat liver and she's not eating it. She says, 
I am willing to do whatever is possible. What did she say? Oh, I'm not fussy or something. I, I, what did she say? She said, I'm willing to do the work. I'm like, but you just said you ate a bite of liver and spit it out. So what I'm trying to explain to you guys is that you have to do this ketogenic protocol the right way or you will injure yourself as with any diet. With the intermittent fasting and the hype about autophagy, but you guys can't go and intermittent fast and then run the whole day without eating because you're going to go into gluconeogenesis and be very catabolic. And if that's driven by cortisol, that's inflammation and it becomes chronic. You're not going to experience the cleaning up of cells and go through autophagy if you are freaking fasting running around. Now don't uh, recommend vegetarianism because a lot of you guys have histamine issues. What if you have low heme? And you need foods high and you need red meat high in hemoglobin. What if you have a dysbiotic gut and you're shoving foods and you, you are DAO deficient and you're eating a bunch of vegetables and you don't feel well and you're just farting all the time, right? And you're tired all the time and you're a vegetarian. What if you're eating eggs all the time and you develop an egg white sensitivity? So yeah, you're limit, limiting yourself. If there's a hundred people in this. Can we get the likes up, guys? Because that brings that brings people to my humble channel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And to do that, you just hit the X in the right corner. It'll collapse the chat. And then you'll see icons on the bottom. And then you'll see a thumbs up. You hit it. And you re-enter the chat. You just hit the little chat icon window. That's how you do. And I always explain that I can't see who's liking up the stream. But it does bring people to this channel. And for people on the replay, I'm very sorry for the quality. Not the, the live stream, I think, is pretty clear, but on the replay, it's pixelated. So I got to go and switch this, fix this whole 4G, 5G thing, and the Wi Fi router is creating the problem because I've upgraded my Wi Fi a million times and I still have the glitchy thing going on. Okay, Steph, can vegetarian be successful if they have no issues? Yes, absolutely, if you eat butter and get enough, uh, uh, rotate your proteins. The two, pro uh, well, you don't rotate that many proteins. To book a consultation, you go to stephanieperson.com. I am full booked, but tomorrow I will be opening up new dates on the calendar. Quality is fine, but who cares about content is, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Living, I appreciate it, appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna fix everything. I think I've been saying for the last couple years, I've been doing this whole thing by myself, it's like every day I'm researching and every day I work with clients and then I run this keto course page and then I'm writing a book and then I'm creating new meal plans and I'm going to be creating a carnivore meal plan to my uh, website, not for the carnivore trend because I realize, realize how good it is, keto carnivore, I realize how good it is to heal the gut for those who've got really bad histamine intolerance. And for those who are trying to develop more DAO, you gotta incorporate the, the uh, organ meats, especially kidneys. Rotate your pro, wait, how can you rotate your protein if the best source of protein on a vegetarian diet, dairy and eggs? Exactly, that's why I, I don't recommend vegetarianism. Especially a lot of you guys have a sensitivity to the protein in eggs, and then you're just eating eggs? I wouldn't do that. I'm all about optimal health, whatever it takes. Hi, Steph. Thanks for going live. Does vegan keto work? Nope. Legitimately for someone that hates meat and how do you... Okay. Veganism is a high carb diet. Keto is a high fat, moderate to low protein diet, but real protein with the right amino acid profile in it. So carnivore is high carb, keto is high fat. And people don't adapt well on olives and avocados. They just don't. So you're screwed and you're hungry. People on a keto, vegan keto, they're starving. How do I know? Because I've worked with many people because I thought it was possible years ago. Didn't work. Nobody adapted. When you use a glucometer, don't believe me, use a glucometer, vegan keto people, and watch how crazy your blood sugar looks. And ketones. Change your taste of meat. I used to be vegan. Now I love me. 
Love me so I love me so you to hate smell what hate the smell and now it tastes and the taste of it now I crave it. Okay, now you crave it. Cool. Thanks so much, love stuff. You changed my life. The world is better because you came this way. Oh I appreciate that a lot. Even through my potenticism and my sardonicism. And my little attitude of being 51. Now, I think it was Michelle or someone was saying back in the chat. I have a keto rash after using magnesium spray. Thought you mentioned last stream it could be related to gut issues. Are you sure it's a candida? Are you sure it's a candida rash from the spray? I don't think the spray. I don't think so. Saturated fats affect the gut bacteria. No. Who told you that? In fact... That's not a full statement, by the way. Affected how? Everything affects everything. So what do you mean? Uh, okay, let me see. Now, Michelle says, since our consultation, February 5th, skip period, first time this month, awful, bloated, pain. So, Michelle, indigestion? Sounds like your gallbladder. That's the problem. A lot of people, I tell them that if their fats are low, they're doing keto their way, which is very low fat. And then they up their fat and then you don't know that you have gallbladder sludge until you up your fat and then you feel terrible so that could be the problem show the indigestion symptoms of feeling really really bad sounds like gallbladder so why don't you send me an email and give me more what what you've been doing, what food you've been eating, and I will respond to that. But I'm, it's sounding like your gallbladder. What about my um? People are gaining weight on macadamia nuts. I didn't approve it, then I approved it, and then I was like, no, let's just take it off. You skipped your period too. Often people skip their period. Oh, with the Michelle skipping her period, I don't know, but her other symptoms sound like. Uh, but she, she's probably having a histamine response to the foods that she's eating. And it sounds like a gallbladder problem with all the other issues. Most women who skip their periods because they already have an underlying issue with their DHEA. They have an underlying issue with pregnenolone steel. They're not using enough ketones. Their glucose is all over the place. And the reproductive hormonal system, the progesterone goes boosh to the floor. And the estrogen goes poof. And then you're having prolonged periods or you're skipping periods. That's a problem. Uh, turmeric absorbs poorly in the body. What are you talking about? Ignorant 15 year old here. Oh, you're 15. Uh, but do women still have menstrual cycles past 50? Yes, honey. I have a menstrual cycle every 28 days. 27, 29, 30 max. Yes, you do. And it all depends on if you take care of your body. Your menstrual cycle can keep climbing. I got women who have menstrual cycles at 57. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Can everyone achieve an eight pack? We all have an eight pack, right? We all have an eight pack. So my, my abs, it's the shape of your abs. Like I've got an ab up here right under the breast line. So it looks like a four pack, but my other ab is up here. And then there's an ab, there's abs below my belly button, but I've got too much fat there for you guys to see it, believe it or not. And it's not a lot of fat, but it's enough fat to cover it. So I could go down in body fat percentage, but then I'd start looking like a boy. So when people become too obsessed with their lean mass, you will lose other bits, especially fatter your bits. So the boobs, the butt, everything will go. So I'm good like this. Okay, thanks so much. And if you ever see women with an eight pack who are just super shredded, they're doing stuff, okay? That's how they look that shredded with abs. All women who have low body fat should not be vascular if they're healthy. So, you know, I'm not vascular. I have veins popping out everywhere. And I should look... I should have fat. I should have fat to be healthy, right? So I'm low body fat, but I'm not like the, the, my skin. Is, like you see these people on Instagram, they can pull their skin out here and it's paper thin. You can't do that on me. And I've got a lot of fat in the dermis layers. Just to remind you guys how well keto is. Oh, thank you, Jason Winters, who writes, who's a coach. Okay, I'm making fat bombs as we speak. Uh, is raw coconut 
and cacao butter. Okay, and that's enough. So sorry, Jason. Um, a lot of people, it depends on Jason's fit, young. If you've got good GLUT4 receptor development, you can clear out some of that glucose from these higher carb, quasi ketogenic foods. But often people will get too much, too much carbohydrate from the meat. And raw cacao is a mycotoxin. It's got mycotoxins mold on it. It's, uh, I believe it's a lectin. And people react on raw cacao, but they don't know it. Um, and uh, it's got caffeine. So I have people do cacao butter, which is another species of the chocolate plant. It's the white chocolate. So I approve cacao butter and not coconut butter for those who've got blood sugar issues. If you've got really stable blood sugar like I do and, and good muscle development, you could probably have the coconut butter if your blood sugar is stable and you make ketones. Okay, you love my mindset. Thank you. Are you say no coconut? No, 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 I didn't say to not have coconut oil. I just said it's not a keto fat. It's not keto. Like, I love coconut oil. It's great for my mom's brain. My mom had a glioblastoma, and when she eats coconut oil for the lauric acid benefits, she doesn't stutter as much. But as a keto fat, no. Olive oil is high in monounsaturated fat. Yes, and we are made mostly out of monounsaturated fat. So it is sort of keto but we're also made out of poly and we're also made out of saturates so we are in that context what we eat and people may just make more ketones because we are animals right we have the three fatty acid profile we are not avocados and we are not olives so we do much better producing viable ketones on animal fats so if, if y'all worked with me years ago, I was like, yeah, here's the olive oil, here's the coconut oil, here's the MCT oil. I would do all of that. Here's the cheese and the nuts. And I've cleared that all out and I'm going with what works because I just learned by osmosis by working with thousands of people. So people are like, where'd you get your education from? I'm like, you guys, pretty simple. Please explain why shrinking breasts, adipose tissue is not a sign that my body is using fat. Huh? What? I don't know what you're talking about, but because that is so unclear and un, not contextualized. Um, you ever see uh, women, fitness women have no boobs, like they just no boobs at all, right? But they're shredded and no butt. And then those little bikinis, like the bikini girls and the heels, because the body is not also gluconeogenesis is the breakdown of amino acids typically not all the time. It can also be the, the converting uh, fat, it, triglycerides in the glucose so your body can use like Michael Phelps, the swinger, singer, swimmer. But uh, typically gluconeogenesis mainly is used to break down amino acids to raise blood sugar so your brain doesn't die. Uh, when people are constantly eating very little food and doing a lot of exercise and a lot of cardio, body gonna take from everywhere. It's gonna take from muscle, it's gonna take from your boobs, it's gonna take from your butt. So if that's what you mean, that's why people lose their butt and boobs and are super lean with an eight pack. Okay. So even if I drop my fat and I up my exercise at first, I would access a lot of fat and I would make a lot of ketones. But after a while, the body's like, I'm sorry, I still need the micronutrients to heal cells. So I'm going to just start taking from other places that you don't want me to take from like your boobs and your booty. Can my mom do keto? Of course, she is having memory issues, but I recall you said you took your mom off keto. I didn't take her off keto. Uh-uh. I couldn't keep her on, crazy woman. She lives way over there on a flight. No, why would I ever take my mom off of keto? That's ridiculous. Sorry, not you're ridiculous. That, that idea is ridiculous. No, I would keep her on indefinitely, but it's a fight. Uh, uh. You know, my mother almost died. She had stage four terminal brain cancer from having a glioblastoma. They're like, she's not going to survive. So I did my best. This, and this is years ago. This is when I started keto. How I had her eat at that time, I would never have her eat that way again because I was having her put, you know, use certain types of fats and too much protein and you know, like some fruits and some some vegetables that are too high in carbohydrate, not enough fat. I put her on this and somehow she's still alive. Okay, 
Anyway, I was like reading some of the comments. But uh, for the first two years, she was pretty good. And I think the fear of dying, she she, she fought and then she, she gave up fighting and then she listened. And then now, can you imagine 11 years of hen pecking at my mother and I hen peck at her? She has an emotional breakdown if I pick on her food too much. So what I've gotten my mom to do is eat 90% healthy. That means she eats salmon, she eats beef, she eats eggs, what a chicken. She eats butter, she eats cruciferous vegetables, she loves them, and sweet potato. That's her main source and some fruit, some, some berries, like some blueberries and, and blueberries and raspberries. That's the main thing that she eats. But sometime I go to visit her and there's some hard candies because she's always addicted to hard candy. So I've gotten her to eat mostly healthy. Let's see. How do you do what friend fatty fish a week? How often? Oh, you can have it all the time if you want, Miranda. Just rotate. You can have it. Uh, there's no like, okay, you have it four days a week. You can have it as much as you want. Just try to rotate your meats. Is it physically possible for a man to look like... I don't even know who that person is. Sorry. Yin Yang. I don't know who the person is. I can't help you. And it's a very weird question. Michael Phelps, <clears throat> Michael Phelps can eat 10,000 calories and not get fat because he's got very efficient fat cells, right? His blood sugar is going to rise, his insulin, he's going to store his triglycerides, and then his body's going to release it back as glucose. That is like a very tiny percent of the people on the planet can achieve that level of functioning, high functioning metabolism. Thought on insulin index, supposedly red meat releases more insulin than push. This is a bunch of nonsense. Don't listen to that. That's the vegan dogma. It's supposed to blunt the insulin receptors. That's a bunch of bull crap. So don't listen to that or else I'm a, an anomaly and I'm not an anomaly and other people are not an anomalies who can do very, very well, especially liver. Can you not imagine eating liver? I will never not eat liver after eating it. Findings about high meat. How do you eat it? You just eat it raw. I've got high meat in my fridge. It's almost ready. And I'm not gonna eat it on camera. I'm gonna eat it alone and see what happens. And I would only eat high meat, which is fermented meat, uh, to see if it has any bacterial benefit to a dysbiotic gut. That's it. I don't think you eat liver too much. Remember the cookies and cream vid? Can't wait for you to do another gym vid, handstands and all. Thank you. Yes, this 51 year old does handstand push ups, no wall, right? Or full range pull ups. It's fun. I love working out. I need to definitely do more workouts and talk about. I need to show you guys how to do home workouts, how to work out in the gym. I'm just so into all of the autoimmunity and, the, and the, the, the inflammation and how to fix that. I kind of forget the whole half, other half of my brain knowledge on workouts and physiology and muscle biology and all this kind of stuff that's beneficial. But it always starts in the kitchen, guys, and in your lifestyle and sleep and diaphragmatic breathing and circadian rhythm and getting off medications like SSRIs, proton pumps birth control pills, thyroid medication, unless you have no thyroid or if you have a radiated thyroid, then it changes. My hubby started on keto development to get, wait, the common rash, but start with vision changes. What gives, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, you guys gotta realize like, you could go to a doctor's office and he'll walk out and not know what's going on. So if you not need me to answer a question it has to be just a little bit more clear. You can't just write two sentences and go, What's going on? I have no idea. Autoimmunity does suck, Katie. Tell them. Do you get annoyed with popular what? Popularity at the gym? 
Um, you know what? I'm a very social person. People who are in my life, they know that I'm always talking to people. I always feel like uh, people, or some people are intimidated by me in gyms. And so they're afraid to approach me. And then I become hyper friendly. So like I'm approachable. Uh, the way today works with, with young people is that you know, if you look a certain way and if your body's a certain way, you have this sort of entitled attitude that, you know, somebody's looking at you, what do you want from me? And that's how millennials kind of work. I don't work like that. And people are like, it's my workout, don't bug me in my work. I'm not like that. I'm at the gym six days a week. If I didn't hit it today, I'll hit it tomorrow. So sometimes I have really great conversations at the gym and really great to mental and emotional exchanges at the gym. And so uh, I'm only known in my, well, I'm not only known, but I'm, I'm often known in my gym because I'm very friendly and I talk to everybody. I don't care who you are. I'm always having conversations and people are always making comments about that. But uh, if people are like, hey, you look great, I really you know, show appreciation and don't ever take it for granted and I've had tons of health problems and, and tons of injuries. And I used to be a pro skateboarder. You guys know I used to be a pro vert skateboarder. So I broke my shite bad. Um, but, uh, and it's funny because I'm putting this whole video uh, collage thingy together. And I'm, people are finding videos of me from so long ago. Holy, do I have any of those? I got to show you guys. This is you guys want to see something funny? Somebody just sent me this. I, I'm, I know I'm digressing off the questions. Good night, Brises. Somebody just sent me this. And I haven't seen this ever. Like, I've never even seen this video. And then somebody sends it to me in my Facebook. And I'm like, Lord have mercy, child. Is that me? Trust me. Stephanie looked better now than she did then. People are like, oh, I remember when I was in my 20s, I used to weigh this much and I used to be this athletic. I was like, no, I'm good today. Thank you. I'll take my 50s. I'll take it. You guys got to watch this video. It is hilarious. Somebody just sent me this like three days ago. <laughs> he stopped keto rash. Wait, he stopped keto, but okay, the rash went away and his vision is restoring. Oh, uh, he probably did keto wrong. He probably had his he probably had his blood sugar be really really wonky. Um, he probably went into gluconeogenesis with a lot of cortisol. Why is this not working? Look at this. I want to show you guys something and it's not working. Oh, okay. Um, and when people do people in his electrolytes could have been off. So people start to develop like low blood pressure on keto because they don't get enough potassium sodium balance. I'm trying to show you guys a funny video. No. Hold on a second. This is so annoying. Let me see here. I'm determined. I'm determined. A second. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's see here. Hold on, guys. No. Just want you to see because people don't really know what I looked like at the a thousand years ago. Feels like I keep saying I was a pro skater, but people don't really seem to understand that. And I'm pre-internet because I'm 51, so you don't find 5,000 videos of me unless people upload them, and then you find them. So, let's see here. I have to email you regarding the best news options. Mm, I would, uh, mm, if you're 16, the, uh, this like consultation, like I have so many people emailing me, if you're just emailing me randomly, 
No, goat cheese. No, goats are fed a lot of corn. So I would not. Because look at this stuff. This is hilarious. I hope the music doesn't get... No, it won't. Because it's playing on YouTube. Or not. Told you my there it is. Look at this stuff. my age. It's freaking stuttering. Hold on, guys. I don't want to play this music either. I don't trust it. Why is it buffering? Okay, I'm just trying to show this cheesy video. This was, oh, look at this. Wait, here we go. I am so black here. Like, they don't even look like me. Look at this. Okay, that's not me. <laughs> Hold on a second. Look, there I am in the striped shorts. Look at that. That's me in 1986. Oh, Lord have mercy. Freestyling. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. But I actually have me skate and vert somewhere. I know I'm getting off the keto subject. I just get bored. Don't you guys get bored off of keto? I get bored. Where's that skate footage? Um, hold on. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something else that's better. Hold on, guys. I have a skate video of me skating vert. And then afterwards, I did an interview with Tony Hawk a million years ago. I think my stupid computer has a virus. This one does. I gotta go get it removed because it's acting very weird and stuttery. And Max should not do that. Uh, anyway, you guys, I give up. I give up. I was going to show me skating vert and not some ridiculous freestyle competition in Vancouver, Canada in like 1986. Ah! Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, bless. Okay, this isn't working, guys. I tried. I'm trying to find a video from way back in the day, but I'm, I have the wrong computer. This one's running really, really slow. I give up. Got insulin resistance and fatty liver. Uh-oh, you need to fix that. That fatty liver, I don't know if you have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or if it's alcoholic fatty liver disease, but that, I, I don't know which one you have. Probably from eating a lot of, per, I'll pay for a consultation. Yeah, it's better for, that you sign up for a consultation because like me on YouTube, you guys, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm showing videos and my freaking technology is not working. The live stream is going to be blurry and pixelated. So when you actually talk to me, on Skype or FaceTime or whatever it is, I can actually sit down and we can sit, I sit and take notes and then I start constructing a new plan for you. I figure out what the problem is. I go over a bunch of details. If, if you do a follow up, I have you guys do homework and then we come back again. And Deborah's saying to book a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. So she's writing it in big caps so you guys can see it very clearly. And with that said, I told myself I was only gonna do a half hour stream and look at me. And I've gotta go clean up my car right now before the sun goes down because I don't like to be outside after the sun goes down because there's vampires and things of this nature anyway you guys got to see a really cheesy video of me where people don't understand people are like 
when white people be like, I get so brown, I get as brown as you. And I was like, did you see me in that video? <laughs> no. When I get tan, no. I don't even look like the same person. Okay. And Deborah's like, oh, not to get bored. Uh, tube socks, so cute. Oh, tube socks, yeah. Oh, the 80s. Y'all millennials missed out on some shite in the 70s, too. Okay, so I think Deborah's hit a lot of the questions for you guys. Do you prefer fresh or frozen? Don't eat frozen vegetables because they won't have enough folic acid in them or folate. That's the problem when you juice, you're not getting enough folic acid. And when you frozen vegetables, you're not getting enough folate. You guys eat your food, chew it slowly, get all the micronutrients in the body and get some liver. And don't do keto for weight loss, but do keto to help your health. And uh, the fat loss will come when you're healthy and not a day before. Because if you see the scale move, I'm pretty sure it's going to be some muscle and water and your body will, well, and a little bit of fat, but your body won't, won't go into hyperketosis or to be highly keto adapted or ketotic until you address your issues. It's not going to happen because you have problems with your insulin, your estrogen, men too, right? If you're toxic, if your liver is not functioning properly, the body's not going to be like, oh, well, we're just going to drop tons of fat and we're going to just build muscle. It won't work that way. You won't get the the business not like that all right so powder equals sawdust i don't know what you're talking about and now is when my streams get silly stephanie do you believe uh, ketogenic living was our intended design um i've never heard of the phrase ketogenic living what's that <laughs> you guys it doesn't work like that we are designed to eat carbohydrates and we are designed, not starches, not man-made manipulated grains and hybridized and genetic, genetically Frankenstein food. No, we are designed to eat plant source foods. We are designed to be able to release insulin and use glucose as fuel. And we are also designed to make ketones and use ketones as fuel. So if we are in a time where there is not vegetation growing because it's not in season or it's not that part of the world, we have the ability to eat animal product. I don't say pro they're not products, animals, parts of the animal from mouth to tail and be ketotic. We can do both and that's what's really beautiful. So the ketogenic way of living, it, I don't know what you mean by that. Living ketogenic adapted. Those, works, th those words don't work together because we are designed to also be able to eat honey and be able to utilize it. We're also able to have anything that's high in carbohydrate that's natural and utilize it as glucose. And believe it or not, we can get freaked out and somebody can go boom, scare me and my blood pressure, my blood sugar go and rise and I could be completely out of ketosis and rely on glucose or I can rely on ketones. I just choose to strictly go keep. Now someone in the wild is not gonna be ketotic all the time. There's no way in H E double L. That's never gonna happen. But for me, I want to be full keto all the time to see what happens to my body, my DNA, and to see if I just continue to age backwards. <laughs> it's not just looking aesthetic. Yo, you got to be an athlete. I was talking about that with one of my friends at the gym. It's not about just having muscles. You've got to have a functional body, right? You got to have a functional body where you can move that body. That's what staying young is and having health on the inside. Energy, energy, energy. All right, guys, thank you for joining this live stream. It's time for me to go. I apologize again for the quality because when I see the replay, I'm like, why? Why do I pay for these upgrades on my Wi-Fi and it still looks like shite? So... Peace out, guys. Until next time, kisses and hugs. Thank you. Uh, 20 grams on a lab Now, uh, I mean, it depends on how you prepare your, your cruciferous, right? 
If you prepare it poorly, I would do total. And if you prepare it well or still a bit of a crunch, I would do net. Why is 20 grams the magic number with keto? It's not the magic number. It's just the magic number with most people. Once the carbs get too high, the body's like, well, hello, glucose. Glucose is entering the bloodstream. And why would I use ketones when there's blood sugar right there? That's why. And if you actually break down the amount of carbohydrates in cruciferous vegetables, it's not a lot. So you can eat pretty much, people can eat up to nine cups of spinach, which is a lot. Salads and some broccoli and all this kind of stuff and eat a lot of it and not have the blood sugar spike too high because of all the fiber. Once you start cooking down the fiber, that raises the carbohydrate count. And not only the amount of carbs hit your bloodstream, but the, the fast pace, the body's like, ooh, sugar. Should get in the blood and then it doesn't want to adapt. It doesn't want to use ketones that you were working so hard and trying to develop the enzyme enzymes to actually break down and utilize this fat as ketone bodies into the Krebs cycle. It's very difficult in the presence of too much glucose. And that's why we try to drop the glucose and spike the ketones in a range. And so 20 just tends to be, it's just like, why is 200 grams of fat? The number it's people can do different numbers, but most people do well around that number. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Deborah, for, for being the mod and I guess slaying that. Uh, one day, Deborah, I want to know what some of these mods, I mean, these trolls have been saying. I was so curious. Okay. I want to see what's happening over time if the troll comments have evolved to something else or they're always the same nonsense. Anyway, thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Deborah, for answering some of the questions that I couldn't see in my little phone because I, like, I stand like this far away because I want to like people to see the business. So then when I spin this close, I was like, oh, okay. All right, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a fantastic day this Sunday, and I'm out. I'm going to upload a video with my mom. It's very short tomorrow, but I want people to see what a person looks like after surviving a glioblastoma, which is the most deadly form of cancer stage four. Woman still alive, so I want you to see that video because I talk about her and people don't see her. What does Mama Stephanie look like? Look tomorrow and you'll see that video. And it won't be the, the crappy pixelated quality. Bye bye bye. And it's Steffi with the S T E P H I E or Y. Bye. There's no F in my name. People are like, Steffi. There's no F in my name. There's a PH. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, guy. Thanks, Ed.